All right, it's some 10 minutes after 7. You're still here on the AM show time now for my banner. Uh, when, when we read to you the news, Roland and myself, and the question as to what digital migration was, we had uh, a lot of answers. Uh, nobody in particular saying exactly what it is. So I guess my conversation right now will probably start from uh, that. We'll continue from where you started guessing what is di digital migration. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, the huge cost that media houses are having to, uh, uh, you know, take on because of the power crisis that we're being faced with. We have to use plant generators, a lot of people buying diesel uh, and, and, and petrol to fuel those generators and the costs, uh, a lot of costs that media houses are having to take on. We'll talk about the effect of that and what the way out is. Uh, my guest this morning is Akwesi Ajiman. He's president of the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association. I'd like to say good morning to you, sir. Thank good you. morning. Thank you for having me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you were probably on your way here. You probably missed the AM news. So I want to start off by playing to you what people think digital migration is, okay. and then we'll continue the right. conversation. Right. Sure. Digital migration is moving from in technological wise, moving from one stage of technology to another. I think there is a need for more information, more education on that because the people are very, very ignorant. I know it's more or less like the, this migration will take place where other uh, media outlets will also come into our system in Ghana here. I don't care much about it, but I think it will bring competition which will make our various TV stations and let me say radio stations to be competitive in the way they broadcast their uh, news and also provide us with the information we need. Uh, a switch from analog to digital, yeah, by our television broadcasting networks. It has been long coming for about two years now. You know, they keep postponing, postponing. I think that uh, this year, June, has been the ultimate time given to all the television stations to switch. And so I think that it's about time. This is the first time I'm hearing, but I think is migration has to do with a movement from one place to another. And digital has to do with technology, I think. So I think it's a movement from where we used to be, technology-wise, to where we are now. Migration simply means moving from one place to the other to search for greener pastures or in search of something to improve a living standard. When it comes to digital, maybe in terms of technology, where it started from and how far it's got to. Ah, okay, don't ask me to explain. Uh, Mr. Akwesi Ajiman is here to tell us what it is. Are you surprised that people don't seem to know what digital migration is? And you'll be surprised that maybe I also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, I think, um, yes, uh, I, I believe we have to do more mm. in terms of education, in terms of explaining to people what the whole process is about and where we are heading. Um, back to where I think trying to answer the question wh what is digital migration? Yeah. Current broadcast is in an analog, analog form which goes through waves. So you have to put up an antenna, you're lucky, you get a signal. Um, we're moving from that to a digital phase where all the signals will be uh, compressed and encrypted into a box. I mean, so you have to get your signal through a set of box or if you have a digital TV, then you can get a signal. What it does is that it frees up spectrum. Spectrum is very expensive, so the country itself will get some spectrum dividend. But for viewers, uh, it comes with better quality pictures, better quality sound. Mm. Um, more broadcasters probably can be on the platform because if you look at the frequency allocation for one analog channel, it can take up to about eight. So it frees up. Um, spectrum is a natural resource, so to speak. So it okay. frees up space for uh, the NCA for government to use the spectrum for other things. Mm. And so that is, in a nutshell, what digital migration is. Um, the process has been going on for some time, but clearly now we, we seem to have our way clear on okay, how we because, want to Because now there's no court action anymore. Not necessarily. I mean, the court action was just... Um, um, came in somewhere in the middle. From the beginning, I think we've had issues with the whole process mm. and the way government was going about it. And so as a body of broadcasters, we've made our points known. Three of the issues that we were 
uh, talking about one was local content we felt that um, for a program like this there should be more local um, involvement in terms of who the contractor is how they are selected and all that I mean unfortunately the contract was awarded to start times we raised issues with that because uh, we don't want a player to be a platform owner and start times in mm. other jurisdictions is also a broadcaster okay. and so if you're not careful and they control the platform and they feel that the, the competition from let's say join news is too much then they will start getting the signal turned off and all that so we said okay let's have an independent body uh, which will be a PPP between ourselves and uh, GBC, mm. being the state broadcaster. That was in the works. But because the contract had been awarded to Star Times, we were all looking up to Star Times starting the project. Mm -hmm. But they delayed, and government said, look, we can't wait forever. So let's move on to the next uh, pro uh, approach. And the next approach is a very consultative approach. And government is saying now that you're going to have a new vendor, but we're going to phase out... Uh, the whole DTT migration. So you're going to have Accra, uh, Greater Accra, Ashanti region. Um, by June, end of June, uh, early July, we should have that sorted. Oh, really? And currently, if you look at the platform that GBC is on, there is existing infrastructure that we can piggyback on. Okay. And that has been an argument all along that why do we have to start from ground zero? All the tel uh, TV stations have masks, they have transmitters why don't we look at what is existing in the market which of them can be then uh, upgraded or used for mm. the process and that's where we are now and we are very happy that so we are here so when point. you say the greater crowd the ashanti region you're saying they would migrate is that uh, it the, the, the ending of june ending of june early july i think that's the, okay. the timeline that we've set so what, what would it mean it will mean that um, but it's going to be a thermal cost so you will still be able to get your signals via analog and so if you have you don't have to necessarily do anything don't rush okay. but then the digital process would have started and okay. so there will be set up boxes if you have an analog tv and you buy the set up box you can then get all the channels what will happen to persons who are on multi tv for instance because they have boxes too uh, multi tv is a different platform mm -hmm. multi tv is a dth uh, satellite platform we are talking about terrestrial and so multi tv will still be there there will still be other channels go tv will be there you will still have i believe first digital will be there you mm -hmm. will have your crystal box which is also coming will be there but then this is the platform that will take the free to air channels okay um this uh, multi tv is more free uh, free view satellite so that will still be there but i believe multi tv will complement some of the gaps that we will have mm -hmm. because it's not you hardly can achieve even 99 percent coverage of the country so there were areas that you will need satellite uh to to fill and i believe mm. that's part of the conversation with mod, the multimedia group okay so what, what's the deadline we're given to ourselves as a country to fully migrate oh fully migrate we're looking at uh, january 2016 uh, but some work will have been done uh, by end of june as i said mm. um yesterday we met with the minister uh, there's a task force that are, that are looking at the various approaches. We have about 17 vendors who have applied to uh, to build up the platform. These are local vendors. I haven't seen the list, but I know there are 17. Because what you've been pushing for is a local vendor. Um, local, yes, but local in terms of also the whole approach. And so even if it's an international uh, contractor, but I think mm. we need to have some local involvement. And okay. I believe that is where we are now in the process. Okay, but raising your funds, I see, is very crucial. Um, I mean, government's position, and which I agree to, is government builds roads and they raise their funds. And so this is seen as um, a social service. Uh, broadcasting is very, very critical to the mm. nation's development. And so government is saying they will raise the funds. I mean, with a Star Times contract, Star Times was supposed to pre-finance the process, <laughs> and then it becomes a concessionary loan. Uh, to mm. the country. In this particular process, because of the various options, uh, pre-finance is an option from a contractor, uh, but government has assured us that they, they, they have the funds and we can, we can get it rolling. Mm. Okay, so now we're given, you said uh, June, July, we should have some of the, oh, June, the July, regions the Accra, the Greater Accra, Ashanti region. Because already, if you look at uh, the GBC platform, I mean, they, they are on digital now, and I think a lot of people are getting channels that are not necessarily free-to-air channels. And so that's 
is something that is existing already and it can be used for the whole process to continue. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, so now you agree that we, we still have a lot more education to do because people still don't seem to get it. Most definitely. I think part of the process is to start an aggressive educational campaign. We're looking to start that somewhere uh, first week in April. Okay. where we will have the roadmap, everything done, the technical specs, okay. vendor selected, everything done. Once we start that education, I believe it's, 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 it's going to be easy. It's going to mm. be easy. It's not too complicated the way people make it. It's just TV, making TV better for you, Yeah. so to speak. Okay. Uh, we, 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 we had the Kenyan story where uh, some stations were kicked out, uh, very prominent stations, because they couldn't migrate. What will happen... Uh, to other, is everybody on board? I, I think that's a question that I, I, I want to ask you. Is everybody in the same boat? I think so far we are all in, in the same boat. I believe this has been long in coming. And so every broadcaster that I know has a digital ready transmitter where they can pipe to whatever the head end will be, which will then transmit. And so we will not have those issues. I mean, the approach that the government has also adopted will help because if you're going to have a DTT transmission company set up independent of NCA, independent of everybody, that becomes, it assures us of um, some independence because the fear has been that if you're not careful and we are all on one platform and then let's say there's a news bulletin that it does not go well for government somebody will just go and say <laughs> like the ECG guys do switch it off no but now we're going to have an independent body and yeah. government's position is that this body will sit under NMC so it will okay. be like just like uh, NMC appoints the MD of graphic NMC will appoint the MD of this DTT company yeah but we know NMC I mean they they, they do they bite Oh, they will bite very soon. They will start really? biting. I believe there's uh, there's conversations going. Are we on there. pushing for it to be become an authority? Because um, now people decide and choose to do what they ask them to I, do. I'm thinking at the giver level is that there should be more collaboration between NCA and NMC, because currently you go to NCA for a license. If you go out and broadcast material that is. Uh, against even the security of the state. NCA does nothing, you have to go to NMC. So we feel that there has to be that convergence. Mm. And already that conversation has started about a week or two ago. NCA and NMC had a, a summit to look at how they regulate the industry. So we are confident that, I mean, we want to support our state institutions. NMC, no matter how we see it, it's a state institution. We need to give yeah, it but the... but it doesn't have much powers. So we, I mean, we, some people say it doesn't have powers I think at that all. there's a content regulation bill that is coming up, and that will give it some powers. There's also a push for some level of, I wouldn't say major, major between mm. NC and MC. But where if you're going for a license, NMC will have something to say about it. Really? That, yeah. Something that will be... Uh, useful. I mean, it's not like they're just passing a comment, but something that will be critical to you getting the line. It has to be. I think we'll come not. there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, in most countries, I mean, in Britain and all those places, uh, now you have uh, uh, one unit which looks at both content and also licensing. So if you come in there and you say, I want uh, a license to broadcast sports TV, they will look at the whole uh, broadcast map do we have too many sports channels already? Do we, can it accommodate? How are they going to be funded and all that? So we look at the whole broad spectrum of how licenses are issued and whether mm. they are doing what they are supposed to do. Let's talk about costs to media houses. What, 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 has, what would it cost to do the migration to get onto this process? I think by and large, if you look at it, for one thing that migration would do is to, it will create a level playing field for everybody. Currently, uh, media competition is more on technology, not content. So you have people saying, oh, I serve the whole country. I am everywhere. I'm in Boko. I'm in Wa. So come and advertise. That will change because we will all be the same. We will all be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it will help generate some level of fair play and competition uh, in, the, in the system. That will lead to better content because now people are going to invest in local content. There's a local content bill that is being worked on by NMC, which will come out and say, for example, you cannot broadcast more than 40% foreign content on your platform. So then people will invest in local content. So it bodes well for the creative industry as a whole. Mm. Now, when you do that, 
what is going to happen is currently every TV station has transmission sites all over, some in Kumase, Takwa, just to get coverage. All of those costs will be absorbed by the transmission company. Then you will have to pay to be on the platform. Now, paying to be on the platform is where the conversation is now because okay. we, 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 we can't pay for the cost of the build-up. We can pay for the cost of the operation because, for example, if this cost is, let's say, uh, $100 million to do for the sake of argument, then you want to divide it among broadcasters. That's too, too much. Nobody can afford it. But like government is saying, if government builds a road, it doesn't uh, ask road users to pay for the cost of the road, but it, it asks for the maintenance. Mm. And that's why we told the rules. So there will be a toll that you will have to pay. And because the DTT company will be independent, we are sure that it's not going to be something that nobody can afford. Because if you look at your cost of production and all the factors that have been taken out from you, your transmission sites are going off, all the security in your transmission sites, the fuel, everything is being taken off, then you will have to pay to be on that platform. Mm. What, ha what happens to uh, stations that have multiple channels and those who have single channels? What are the advantages, disadvantages? I think there's going to be what we call the LCN, like uh, the channel numbers. So everybody will have a channel number. So if, let's say, um, uh, Metro is channel 2, it will be channel 2 on every box. Now we're going to do that because currently it's only the free-to-air channels that are going to be migrated onto the box. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so we're, we're not going to be touched for now? No, no, no. You are, you are safe. You are okay. safe. You are good. You are doing good. So <laughs> stay where you are. I mean, it's only the free-to-air channels that are going to go on there. So the okay. free-to-air channels currently, I understand we have about... 20 or so okay okay so those 20 will be given numbers on the uh, on the box mm. now for the longest time i believe we will stay with those 20 for some time mm. because you don't want to just open up the market and then uh, these people have made a lot of investments people have invested in transmitters uh, they've employed people they have studios and all that so you don't want the following day all of a sudden somebody sitting in his uh, one-man shop decides that i will just record music videos and come and put it on the channel and then mm. it's open up. So the free to air channels and I believe for the past two years there has not been any new license issued okay. by the NCA. So those ones are going to stay. Mm. There should be le some level of protection for them. Okay. So is it possible that we can say we, we want to put one of our channels for instance on this, uh, you know, add up to this box? I, I mean, so far as it's not a free to air, it will not be possible okay. for now. Okay. I mean, eventually, I think the, the modalities will come out on how people can play on. Because mm. there's going to be, eventually, maybe a pay component. Okay. Where, like, pay, pay, pay per view and all that. Because you have the box. Those boxes, you don't have to pay recurrent uh, subscription for it. So, th that will be just like what we do. Look because like Multi TV, once you buy the box, you don't you have the to box, pay. Yeah. Uh, subscription fee yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah. that. And so that would be what it is. Okay. So once you have the box, you can watch. So who will pay for the box? The people themselves? The people, will, you have to buy the box. But so if what you have, it is? If you have a digital TV, you can get a signal. And most okay. TV sets now are digital. So mm -hmm. a lot of people can pick the signal without buying the box. Mm -hmm. But for if you have an analog TV, then you have to buy the box. And uh, government's position on that is that they're going to uh, do some means testing to see who can afford and who cannot afford. Some people genuinely cannot uh, buy the box at the price. So maybe there will be some government subsidy. But it will not go for people like yourself who can buy oh, the how box. How do you know? Oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can All, right. All right. So <laughs> let, let's also talk about uh, this power crisis and the kind of effect that it's having on all of us. Uh, we're feeling the heat as well. We pay so much uh, for diesel because we pay we we buy diesel other other people buy petrol what's the plan that's a difficult one i mean we've been scratching our heads uh, because unlike most businesses um, you have offices that when there's light off they just close and go home and then they come back the following day to continue people mm -hmm. work from homes they work from their laptops in their cars but for broadcasting you have to be always on it's an always on uh, business yeah. and so the amount of money people are spending, I don't want to even start talking about the, 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 the funds now. It's, it's just too much because you have studio on transmit on uh, generator, you have transmission sites on generator, 
you have offices on generator and probably you have four or five transmission sites so it's it's too much way too much but then that's the situation we are in, in as a country and we have to deal with it and so what we have been doing at the giver level has been engaging um, tower companies to see how we collaborate on what we call the giver tower farms uh, the plan here is that for example if you go to Ahuirasi where uh, multi 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 TV have is, a, you have a, your mask there yeah um, across from that you have um, ETV also has a mask there mm. across from there you have uh, Oman FM also has a mask there I mean within a, a, a radius of about uh, 50 meters you have about six or seven broadcasting houses each of them is powering its own generator each of them has their own security each of them has their own engineers so what we are saying is that why don't we come together and see how we can share resources mm. and so it's a giver initiative where for example instead of five uh, gen sets in that area for these five broadcasters we could have one mm. now we then share the cost of diesel and for because when the lights go off it goes off for everybody yeah that does not affect your content in any way in most places if you go to south africa we have what you call the centex centex does all your transmission for you mm. so all you go is you pay your monthly fee and you come and sleep mm. it's a, the same model that we are trying to run here where for all the uh, independent broadcasters we could all we look at locations and then we co-locate I mean, some have already started, and we believe that's the initiative we want to use. But there's a risk there, isn't it? Because well, if that also goes off, you know, then it means that all the stations that are sharing one power are off. No, so you have a generator and you have a backup. It's far better than having five generators being powered at the same time. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we should push. Competition should not be the station itself. I'm happy. Competition should be I have better content so that we can all improve. And so if we have to, and I believe most of the times, I mean, we've had instances where a station goes off and people come out and say, well, I have a spare transmitter, let's use it. And so that's the kind of collaborative approach that we are advocating that, okay. look, yes, we are competitors, but let's see how we can work together to save costs. Because if you are going to be running generator throughout, we are also talking to some of the inverter companies, I mean, some companies who sell solar um, panels to see how they can give favorable terms to our members so that we can we can keep Ghanaians glued mm -hmm. I mean unfortunately this power crisis is not just affecting the cost of running the business advertisers are also yeah. pulling back because they are being affected and so the first thing they cut when uh, when cost of operations go out is okay my advertising but let me cut it out mm -hmm. now on top of that you have situations where you are broadcasting and half of the city is not is on is off and so the reach for advertisers is also going down so in terms of returns of um the investments they make in advertising also going down so we have to i'm hoping that the, like the president said he said he was going to fix it so we're just hoping that it will mm. fix soon but what's been the response from media organizations i think uh, the calls uh, i mean it's something that we probably should have waited before announcing because We've have calls from all over the country. From they're pushing you to go pushing. ahead and There's do it quickly. Good news. We have recorded that now we are dying. <laughs> so it tells you that people are really yeah. struggling, struggling. Mm. Who is feeling the heat the most though? Is it the uh, newspapers, the print, the I, television, or the radio? I think the television is feeling the heat more. Uh, radio transmitters. I mean, with a one K transmitter, you should be fine. But with TV, we, we, it's, you suck energy. Mm. You cameras are on FCC is on with with radio you could just have your studio powered up by a small uh, gen set and then you'll be fine but with TV where you have to do programming lights if your light goes off I mean the other day you have to do your doom so news I mean, which, which how do you, you like it it's good I mean I believe <laughs> you, should, you should do more of those you know? I mean it's, it's a different way to look at it but I think it's it's it got people thinking that mm. look this is the situation we are in yeah yeah so I think people are feeling the heat all over and we we are hoping that uh, working together as Giba with uh, the Ministry of Communications with all the other stakeholders we could we could find a solution to this do, do you have a, uh, a time frame within which you want to do this are we looking at latest by April? We should something should be April up. this year. Yeah, so yeah. we're talking next month. Yeah, because already there are some areas where 
is easy to do. It's just that what we want to do is look at how do we create the control mechanism. Okay. Because you don't want a situation where there's suspicion that if I co-locate on uh, Joy FM's uh, tower, they could just decide that, okay, let me switch them off. We're still so suspicious of each other. That's the point, we? you know, but I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's cool. So what we are trying to do is, that's why we've talked to tower companies that, okay, in that case, let's it's more like an outsourced mm. role for okay. them so no individual media house is controlling it we have an independent independent body which mm. controls it which looks at maintenance of the towers uh, staffing mm. engineers you could probably um, get less engineers working in on the sites and everything so it's still work in progress but we're going to work are we not talking cutting down uh, staff as well uh, not necessarily. It's going to be the staff will now become staff of the tower company, and so. But we can have so many of them doing the same. Job. I mean, unfortunately, at some point in time, that's what it ought it, it, mm. it will boil down to. At some point in time, because, I mean, already people are cutting stuff anyway, mm. and so we have to find a way to do it. Are we making money now, or we're making losses? Are we? Are we making I mean, profit? I, I mean, last week I was in Kumasi for the AGM and. I mean, people walked up to me and said, look, guys, let's do something because some radio stations, I mean, in areas, Takwa, they don't even make any revenue. They, make, they, can't, they can't pay their bills. And that's the reality of the situation. And so it's, it's, it's gotten that bad. Mm. Where, unfortunately, what, it, what is now happening is that people are just putting any content on there just to make ends meet. And so that's why we are calling for stricter regulation. That's why we are talking to the NCA that, look, it's good to issue licenses, but we have to be sure that this economy can accommodate the kind of licenses that you are issuing. Mm. And so yesterday, for example, we had a meeting with them and we told them, look, we are not going to compromise on the issue of new FTA licenses because if you're going to bring in, if you make TV the way we've done radio, then we are dead. Already, I believe for a country like Ghana, we have too many TV stations. But hey, that's not that's out of my hands. Because the more stations we have, the more members we have as Kiba. But the more dues you get. I wish they pay, but <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the, the more dues we, we we get. But I think it's it's the it's the reality of the situation that we have to look at the whole economic model mm. of the country. Okay, can we do twenty channels? If you go to South Africa, for example, for the longest time, they had SABC one, two, three, and ETV. And, and so that protection helped them grow. Now you mm. have ETV in almost every other African country because with that base, they were able to grow. But in our case, we don't allow the babies to grow. Mm. All of a sudden, we bring in people. So all we have is people, everybody crawling, and we are crawling. And if you're not careful, what will happen next five years, you have the skies and you know, South African companies coming in to buy all the media houses. Mm. And then what, what do we gain? They will not... They are not here to. They are, they are here for business, but we have also a role as Ghanaians mm -hmm. to protect our country, to, to make sure to educate, make sure that the Ghanaian values are not lost just because we want to make money. Mm. Is there a special fund that Giba has set up, for instance, for tr for struggling media houses around this time? Uh, we're talking to um, um, a few financial institutions. There's one that um, they, there's a media development fund uh, based out of. Um, New York that we are engaging with to see how, I mean, the, to give some concessionary loans and facilities. Like I told you, we were talking to some of the uh, energy companies to see how they can give credit terms on mm. inverters and all that. We are doing that, but we don't want to take on too much because if you're not careful, people pick up these uh, facilities and then they use it to uh, travel to China to bring goods. So <laughs> you have to make sure that it's going right. So if it's okay. for equipment, if it's for generator facilities and all that we 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 we're talking to them mm. okay can we withstand this though i believe so i believe so i believe i mean what this has done for us is given us an opportunity to really think of how we want to run this country i okay. mean both the economy and especially with media because we realize that p media houses are making losses but it's it's been absorbed by other Otherwise, you have a mm -hmm. lot of people who are 
doing other things and bringing in the money to uh, supplement their uh, media companies. But now, because the other companies are also not doing too well, they've started feeling it. And all of a sudden, people are saying, okay, how do we get this thing sorted? And we believe through this, as bad as it is, we'll come out stronger. We'll come out with better regulation. Got the NCA for the first time is listening more than they ever done uh, mm -hmm. ever has before. why why do you think because so? they've, they've seen that the pressure is there they've seen the calls that are coming people are not paying even their license fees because mm -hmm. they can't they can't afford it so all of a sudden okay let's sit down and talk has become fashionable in times past hey you pay you are you, you go so mm -hmm. we have to do that we have mm -hmm. to work together as broadcasters as media practitioners to see how we we are, this is the only country we have yeah. And we all have to work at it to make sure that our country survives this. Mm. What has become of our broadcasting law? Oh, that's also sitting somewhere. I believe mm. uh, it's in, in Parliament now. It's uh, been there for a very long time. Very long time. time. The last time we heard of it, which is about a month ago, uh, they, were, they were asking for a few other... You know, there's always self-interest. People feel, okay, this clause in there doesn't go well for me and so people are lobbying and always there's been changes and all that so we are anticipating that um, sometime this year this thing has to be passed because you can't have a digital platform without a broadcasting bill ownership has to come to play mm -hmm. content has to come to play and all those things have to uh, put together so yesterday for example the minister of communication tasked that NCA, GIBA, GBC sit down together and look at all the residual issues mm. and the residual issues here yeah, uh the broadcasting bill who is a, a regulated player because currently you have channels that have popped up from nowhere yeah there are channels that i'm surprised to see and they are not they don't have licenses oh really yeah so they just put somebody puts them on the platform and they are on but it's going to it's going to it's going to be cut because um we've 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 made petitions severally to the ministry that look mm. this cannot continue you can't just get up today and say i'm a savings and loans company people should come and bring their money here so why should somebody just wake up in the morning and say i'm a broadcaster yeah let's go through the rules let's make sure that people have the financial backing because your rate of return i mean it, your payback time for broadcasting is somewhere between five to ten years do they have the financial muscle to withstand that five years mm. where you have to pay salaries you have to pay operational bills if you don't then don't go in because it's not they say all that glitters is not good yeah right? yeah uh, you know once you brought in salaries i wish i could go there but right. i'm sure because of the times that we, we find ourselves in right now i can't touch on it so that will be for another day <laughs> all right low <laughs> salaries for uh, uh independent broadcasters i think uh, you pay really low it's it's a, it's a science of the times because it's not yeah even before the times came the times have been there it's been there it's not, <laughs> things haven't changed that much it's just that it's gotten worse um the the reality of the situation is that you know broadcast is a pay after uh you get service mm. so for example an advertiser will come you hardly will have them pay before the advert is played the book you go you send them a tc so for example even if you are uh, advertising one million a month, chances are that you probably will collect about a tenth or mm. of that in that in that given month. So there's always a cycle, mm. and with that cycle, you have operational cost. Your generator uh, is off. You have to buy fuel. So you end up realizing that it's not. It's, the margins are tight. It looks. I mean, if you, it looks great when people say oh, oh i'm paying this thing for a month and i say oh that's a lot of money but if you look at the cost of production uh, cameras personnel picking stuff up from homes travel mess it's 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 mind-boggling yeah it's but yet you know you pay some people a lot more way more than you pay others it's I like, don't know if it's, it's, it's like, come up for discussion, it's, it's, but it's, it's there like a if way you go to, to Real, make it uh, uniform. Like you go to Real Madrid, how uh, they pay. <laughs> <laughs> see, Ronaldo you know, is getting yeah, yeah. like... Yeah, and then you see that the goalkeeper... So it's uh, the same. It's the same everywhere. There you are know, no the, plans to make a level, you I, know, like controller, you know, there's, there's no... I think they are, for, like the, for the most part... Single-spined kind of structure. I don't know about single spine in here, <laughs> but uh, I think for the most part it's getting better because I've been around for some time and I've seen that the salaries as low as it is is getting up. Mm. I mean, 
Uh, the last time we did a comparative study, and for example, banks are not paying nowadays. It's uh, I mean, you have media houses paying almost like banks, and so it's not as bad. Mm. But there are some too that are really, really bad yeah. because, like I said, there are some media houses that make five thousand the whole month as their revenue. Now, five thousand the whole month. I'm telling you, in this country, and so. That is 50 million old Ghana cities. Yeah. The, so the CEO he doesn't even get paid because he is he's the owner of the place. So he has to pay technicians. So you get a, some mm. technician being paid 100 cities. That's bad. That's bad. Yeah. But okay. then that is the reality of the situation. Mm. And so we have to make sure. And that's why we tell the NCN sometimes people think that, oh, you guys are afraid of competition. We're saying if you continue to just give license to everybody, what will happen is that advertisers, the, the market is too cluttered. Mm -hmm. And so they, will, they won't even advertise because yeah. they feel that if I put it here, what is the guarantee that the market is there for sure. me? So they would rather use the money to do other things. So you have other activations that give them the same returns. Mm. They will put the money there. I'd like to thank you. There's a station that still owes me. It's a radio station. Really? They owe me about three months salary. Can okay. you help? That's the president of the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, uh, Mr. Akwesia Juman. Thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you very Thank much you for your time. Stay with us. We've still got talk ahead here on the AM Show.